go. Yo, my BS people, what is going on? I hope you guys are doing wonderful as I have a very wonderful video made for you guys today. If you've been following my channel, you would know that I have been collaborating with professionals around the world to assist in the dissemination of behavioral sciences. In today's video, we have the lovely Sarah Morris, BCBA. In fact, if you want to find Sarah on YouTube or Instagram, you can find her as Modern Day ABA. Today's video is on clinical hacks, so if you want to go check her channel out, I would highly recommend that you check out the video, How to Be an Elite RBT, as it goes along with this video. Oh, and if you happen to be starting a YouTube channel yourself and you're stuck on consistent growth, I just happen to have the tool for you. The YouTube Buddy Chrome extension is exactly what you need. It gives you all your creator need. So as an affiliate, I get a code, and that code gives you a nice discount. Oh, and if you happen to be a coffee and wine freak, check out the Scout and Seller link below. Now, with all that said, let's really thank Sarah for coming on today's channel. But remember guys, the only thing standing between you and your goal is the BS story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. All right, everybody, I am here today with Sarah. Um, Sarah, why don't you start off by introducing yourself by telling us when you became BCBA and how did you find the field of applied behavior analysis? Absolutely. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I joined the ABA field in 2015. I got my start providing direct therapy to kids with autism in home and community settings in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Um, and I heard about it actually while I was studying psychology at Winthrop University in South Carolina. And I was planning on going into graduate school to become a school psychologist. So ABA was intended as a way to gain experience toward that. And I actually heard about it because there was a Craigslist ad for like the one ABA provider that was in the area at the time. And the department chair for um, the Department of Psychology sent that out in an email blast and I just happened to read the email. So it was very much by chance almost. I feel like that I fell into the field, but I feel like that happens with most people in ABA. They like, don't know about it until, until they're in it. So yeah, that's kind of how I got my start. And then after a couple of years of doing home and community based, getting my RBT credential, I moved out to Austin where I worked in my first center-based position as an RBT. While I did that, I worked on my master's degree in ABA through the University of West Florida and passed my boards in 2019. So I got my degree in 2018, became a BCBA in 2019. Since then, I've been working as a BCBA in Texas, then Oklahoma. And recently I was appointed to the position of president-elect of OGABA, so our ABAI affiliate in the state of Oklahoma. I have a YouTube channel where I disseminate the concepts and techniques involved in ABA to the world. And I'm currently working on an ABA caregiver training curriculum through a data collection platform called Unitas TI. Awesome. So we have a lot of experience coming here. Um, congratulations, by the way, on the president elect. That sounds very cool. Let's transition to, you know, why did you actually reach out to me? How did you even find this page? Yeah, um, I found you on Instagram, I believe. And I reached out to you because I wanted to spread the word about my channel, because obviously it, it's, a, it's a growing channel. I wanted to expand my audience. Um, part of our ethical obligation as BCBAs is to disseminate the science to people. It's, it's, almost magical, even though it is a science and, and what we can accomplish with it. So I want to share that with the world and I want to show people how accessible it can be. So I'm especially hoping to reach autism families, caregivers, staff, basically the autism care community with my with my videos. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we can get that link of your channel down in the comments below for this video. But one of my signature questions before we get into today's topic, which is clinical hacks, is what is one thing that you do like about ABA currently? And then maybe one thing that we could also work on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I like about the field is that we are constantly evolving to suit the needs of the populations we serve. So we're not stagnant. Um, and I love that. We, we hold ourselves to a really high standard of ethical behavior and clinical quality. So that's one thing I really love. 
One thing I dislike about the field is while we're um, held to a very high standard of ethical behavior per our code of ethics, ABA organizations are not necessarily held to that same standard, ABA organizations as a whole. So BACB credentialed individuals are held accountable, but those non-credentialed individuals working within those entities, they don't get in trouble with their licensing board if, if they do something wrong. Um, and I think that the BHCOE and CASP accreditations are a wonderful step in the right direction for that reason. However, they're not required yet for these businesses to operate. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm sure there's a lot of people actually out there, like myself, who don't know this information like to the T, like you do. But we are going to get into clinical hacks today, uh, which is our topic. So clinical hacks was chosen for kind of creating awareness on common situations by Sarah. So starting with that, what are some of the things that you wish you would have known coming in as an RBT? The number one thing I wish I would have known would be that the RBT is supposed to be the client's number one reinforcer. So um, I think, thank you. I think a lot of the time we're so stressed out as new clinicians about just getting the data in, running those programs. And that's so important, but you're really not going to get anywhere if you don't have that instructional control. Um, you can really expedite those treatment gains if you have a mutual trust and respect relationship with your client. So that would be my main thing. Pairing with reinforcement is, is so important. That was wonderful. Wonderfully put right there. I know this is a video that you have, how to be an elite RBT, but I'm just going to ask you straight up right here, you know, what are the specific hacks that you would give out right away? Yeah. Um, I think planning out your session in advance so you don't feel like lost during your session and planning that around naturalistic learning opportunities, planning it around your client's routine would be a big clinical hack. And I go into, I go into more detail about this as well as the other hacks that I'm going to mention in my video, but yeah, planning out your session in advance. So you really feel confident going in, like I'm going to work on, maybe it's just three programs, which are really going to hit hard on those programs and, and do so in a meaningful way. Next would be to actually read that behavior plan, take time, sit down, read the behavior plan for those kiddos that have um, behaviors that we're targeting for reduction and also instructions for the skill acquisition programs too. I think a lot of the time there's just a mad rush to get things done, but there, this is a very detail oriented applied science. So we have to be very technical. We have to sit down and make sure we're, we're delivering the correct SD. We're using the correct prompts. Everyone's being consistent so that that data we're collecting actually reflects something meaningful. Next would be to consider collaborating with your supervisor. So it's not just this one-way relationship of BCBA critiques your implementation of these programs and the behavior plan, um, and that's it. You are a wealth of knowledge about your client because you spend way more time with your client than the BCBA does as an RBT or as a therapist. So you can offer feedback. You can offer ideas. You can also seek feedback too, because I think that shows a great sense of initiative if you're like, hey, watch me run this program and tell me if I'm doing it right. Um, so make sure that that's, that conversation is back and forth in terms of feedback. Next, I would say, look at those graphs. When you're collecting data day in and day out on these programs and you feel like, oh, I'm just spinning my wheels, I'm not getting anywhere. Look at the graphs. If you don't know how to get to the graphs, if you don't know how to interpret those graphs, because sometimes they can be a little tricky, ask the BCBA. That also shows amazing initiative on your part that you're asking to see how those programs are progressing. And it also gives you a little, little boost, a little encouragement if you feel like progress is kind of slow. And next one I would say is don't stress too much about those interfering behaviors that are coming up in session. Those ones we're targeting for reduction. I feel like a lot of the time, especially with new clinicians, it's like, oh, this behavior happened like, like all the time. I'm getting really frustrated. I'm taking it personally. I can't get through. I, like I'm trying to just take you to this other room and we're, you're dropping down on the floor and it's a whole thing. Don't, don't stress. Just take a deep breath. Remember, this is why that client is here more than likely is because we have difficulty with this behavior. We have difficulty making transitions. So this is a learning opportunity. This is probably the most valuable moment of your entire session if you can treat this behavior um, in this moment. So just take a deep breath. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in your client. Remember your behavior plan. It's all good. So those are just some of the hacks I would recommend. There are several more in my video. I highly encourage you to check that out. I highly encourage that you guys go check that out too, because one of them is by a fanny pack and we're not going to go over that, but that is on <laughs> the list for that video. But kind of one more thing to wrap up this topic is what common scenario 
would you want to discuss maybe with a new RBT to maybe practice to make sure they're ready for a substitution? Like what is the most common situation that you can think of? I would say the foundational skills of running a successful session would be pairing, like I had mentioned before, pairing yourself with reinforcement. And then next step is just understanding that behavior plan because you can kind of plan on running those skill acquisition programs. A lot of the time you're the one that's contriving those opportunities to run skill acquisition, but sometimes those challenging behaviors or those behaviors we're targeting for reduction will just pop up and you have to be ready. Biggest part of the BIP, I would say, if like all you can do, if all you have time for is to skim it, look at the antecedent section or the triggers, see what sets that behavior off so you can strategically avoid those, those triggers, especially while you're pairing or so that you're, you're prepared. Like, okay, in this situation, I have to be ready to run this behavior plan. Wow. Well put, well put. This is all great information. I definitely did not have a conversation like this before I went into a session as an RBT. And like now I really wish that I had all this information. And I do think this is a good transition to the next one, which is there will obviously never be a perfect way to do something, but how important is it for us or you guys clinicians to be honest with RBTs about how difficult this job is actually going to be? It's very important, Troy. Um, I have been in this field for several years and I have, I still have days where I question my own abilities as a clinician, um, that imposter syndrome, right? Like, even though we've proved to ourselves time and time again, like I got this, I can do this. I've had all these amazing days. There's still those days where I'm like, what am I doing? Um, and, but everybody else I've talked to in this field says the exact same thing, no matter where they're at in their career, we all have those days. And we have to keep in mind that the challenges we face in ABA are not simple. Every client is different. So we have to custom tailor our programs to these individual kids, no matter how many research articles are out there that we're referencing, there's always going to be something new that pops up. This is not simple. It takes practice and it takes problem solving to work through these things, often over multiple sessions. So just do your best to remember your why, focus on the small wins whenever you're having an off day. And remember, especially new clinicians, you have to remember you are learning an entire science in doing ABA and it's not like anything else out there. It's it's totally unique. So um, it's not easy, but anyone who's been in the field for a little bit of time can tell you that the effort is so worth it when you see those treatment gains and you see a kid learn how to communicate their wants and needs when previously they couldn't. It's wow, it's amazing. Wow, again, wonderfully put. Like we said earlier, Sarah has a video, How to Be an Elite RBT. If you want more information on everything that we talked today, maybe something a little bit more direct than what we talked, go to her channel and check that video out. I do want to transition out of here and end this recording here pretty soon. I wanted to ask you in my final question, how is your time with me today? And what is a topic that you would like to see or do with me in the future? Ooh. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Um, this is a really cool opportunity to kind of get the word out there about ABA, which has been my mission from the get-go. Topic in the future. I'm going to have to think about that one for a second, Troy. Let me look at my list of continuing education topics I've been wanting to do, like for myself to learn more about how to teach play skills. Um, ACT, although I'm sure you've probably touched on ACT before in the past. Um, anything related to the APBA, like Association for Professional Behavior Analysts, because there's a lot coming out about like the law and like the, that kind of thing on that side. And, oh, if you do anything on essential publications within ABA, like those, those benchmark research articles of like LOVAS and things like that, and kind of, um, relating back where we are as a field today to, um, to those essential publications, that would be really cool. Sweet. No, thank you for all the feedback. I did like that first one a lot, the play that really caught my attention. Um, I might have to do something on that in the future, but remember guys, like I said, Sarah has a video on how to be an elite RBT on her channel where you can find all this information probably explained even better over there. So that's all we're going to have time for today. Sarah, I want to thank you for coming onto my channel. Is there anything else you'd want to say here to close? Um. Thank you so much for um, having me on today, Troy. All the ABA therapists, BCBAs out there, keep up the great work out there. You're doing amazing things. That's why you can catch me next time. Because you got to generalize, maintain, and create a model with long lasting sustainability and one that's open to change. So at the end of the day, you want to drive results, and you're looking to get paid, you got to do what's right to get that back.